Hello and welcome back to Real Estate Agent School. My name is Cameron Ur. I am a real estate agent and a real estate coach helping agents grow their business through door knocking as well as knowing exactly what they should be doing as a brand new agent to be a top producer in their first year in this career. I am super excited for this video. This is going to be this week's live door knocking approach where you can listen to me in person on a doorstep talking to a prospect live and me breaking down the entire conversation. This week's video is gonna be really interesting because I actually don't end up getting this deal. I don't think there's a possibility that I will work with this person in the future, but the beautiful thing about this recording is it will teach you what type of things I'm educating clients on, what type of questions I'm asking, and how to just have a personal, awesome, fun conversation while door knocking so you can enjoy prospecting and grow your business. So make sure you stay through the entire video so you can hear exactly how I start the conversation and end the conversation and how live door knocking really does go. So for those that don't know, I am a real estate agent that built my business off of door knocking and I am now going back on the doors to give you live prospecting videos, quote unquote. I wish I could do it in person. I have not yet figured out how to do it legally with recording people at their homes and at their doorsteps, but I'm in the works of that. Hopefully I can figure it out. So if you do have tips or somebody knows the legal end of recording somebody without their knowledge, or if I just have to ask the person, let me know. But in this version of this recording, I'm going to be showing you how I knocked the door, how I approached the door, and going over the entire recording. Door knocking is awesome. It is a grind. It is hard, but it will grow your business more than anything. And it's what helped me go from struggling as a real estate agent to now selling 15 million on autopilot without having to prospect anymore. So listen into this script and hear how I break down this conversation and educate this homeowner, even though I don't end up getting the deal. Hello, hey, what's up? Do you remember me by chance? I remember your face, but I can't remember what you were doing. <laughs> it's all good. I am a real estate agent, oh, and right. I talk to people door to door, I work in the neighborhood. Yeah, I remember last time you had just recently bought this place that we talked. Maybe that was like... So the interesting twist that I'm giving you with this week's recording, this is a door I've actually knocked on before in the past. I was looking through my notes and I knew exactly who this person was. I had their name, I had the previous conversation notes, and I knew when they bought the home. Funny enough, the reason why I get shut down from this conversation is something I did not find out in previous conversations and it wasn't in my notes. So listen in further of how I handle the conversation and where the conversation goes. Yeah. years ago or so? Yeah. yeah. Almost three years actually. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, anyways, just in the neighborhood again, talking about the neighborhood. I have a client that is, again, interested in all these townhomes. And so, do you guys know what your plan is with this place? Have you considered well, selling it? For now, we're hanging on to it. But okay. And I noticed the other day, I was out walking around the neighborhood. There's four or five of them for sale. Yeah, not, so... Not up on this end, but maybe yeah. down on the other side of that empty lot. Yeah, so one... Okay, so a lot of the times when you're asking if this person is interested in selling, they will become the market expert for you where they're saying, oh, I actually know of multiple that are currently for sale. And that did you look into these? Did you see that this home is for sale? And you really have to know your stuff about the neighborhood so you don't get surprised and you don't come across as the actual professional knowing as much as you do. And so this homeowner was telling me, yeah, there's multiple for sale. I've been walking around seeing those on the market. Luckily for me, I actually knew exactly how long those have been on the market, what they were listed for, if they were active or under contract. And so that is why when you go door knocking, the prior market research and preparation you do is extremely important. If you're not able to go into a conversation and be extremely confident with the data in the neighborhood, and be able to answer questions, tell the homeowners the actual statistical information about what homes are selling for, how quickly they are selling, you're gonna struggle because sometimes the homeowner is gonna know more than you and that kind of lowers their respect or your credibility when you're having conversations with these people. So let's let's continue into the conversation. One of them is under contract. The other one is super overpriced, almost. Yeah, it's way overpriced. Another right around 500. 
Yeah. Thousand mark, which seemed a little. Yeah. But, so one, it was listed at five twenty-five. Oh my god. And they're not getting that, and so yeah. it started to drop, which is, and then the others that have sold in that like mid to lower four hundred range yeah. have flop, flown off the shelf. So, yeah. um, anyways, they're the. The capability of homeowners in these townhomes is awesome because of when they bought them and the interest yeah. rates they have. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, my wife actually bought this house through a good friend of hers that's right. also a realtor. So, cool. if we did go with somebody, it would probably be okay. Yeah, first. no, that's fine. But the, the main reason I have these. So here is what comes out. I find out that they had purchased the home from. Or well, the wife of this person purchased the home through her good friend and they would probably use them again if they were to move. So the objection is I already have an agent or we know who we would use and it's the same person as we've used in the past. With this objection, it is very, very hard to overcome sometimes because one, as a real estate agent, I love my people. I want them to be tied to me. I want to be their agent for life. And so I obviously want to respect people that are committed to their real estate agent. Does that mean that I'm not going to do my best to work hard to show that I may be a better option? Well, I know I'm a better option, but I'm going to just be kind, be courteous and truly try to educate them and see if I really could help them potentially better than another option. But doing so and how you do that is really challenging you want to be respectful you want to ask the right questions and sometimes it's actually better to not be pushy depending on the body language and the way the conversation is going so listen how i continue this conversation and just have a great relationship with this person and get more information out of the conversation to further the relationship and the main reason i have these conversations is one to find out if you have a go-to person yeah. and two just to kind of get a pulse on the neighborhood's kind of movement and yeah. turnover you know and so we're planning on hanging out here but you could. I, I don't know i didn't i was surprised there was four or five houses for sale the other day so yeah maybe people are trying to get out before the market potentially <laughs> I think I think we've been to the worst of it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, the, the the main reason I say that is because of interest rates kind of cooling off, and every home that I put offers on in the last month or two has had multiple offers. Which well, is that's that's really good. I've got, a, I've got a friend actually in St. Jordan. So I continued the conversation with him, and we were just kind of talking back and forth, and I was able to tell him about the experiences I was having in my current market. A lot of people just don't realize where the real estate market is at and kind of the pulse of where things are going and what's happening. In my specific market, homes are moving really quickly if they're priced right and marketed correctly. If they're priced way too high or not marketed correctly, they're for sure sitting. So people are in this weird limbo stage of our home selling, our home's not selling, what's going on, are interest rates affecting anything? And so Furthering the conversation, he starts to talk about a friend's home that is in a different market that is sitting on the market. But from my questions, I find out that it's just higher priced. And so this homeowner's perspective on the real estate market completely changed. He was thinking that it was slow, not really going anywhere, lots of inventory, everything sitting on the market. But I was actually just able to explain that if you price things right, and have a good strategy of how to market your home, you can have a massive amount of success when selling. And so the reason why I'm telling you all of this is because I want you to have the real estate know-how of how to educate the clients that are in front of you. With this specific person, I, I continue to talk to him for a couple more minutes, but I knew that with him and his relationship with his wife and what it seemed like and previously talking to him, there wasn't a whole ton for me more to push on. So I just had a conversation, was respectful, and pretty much just said, hey, I'm in the market all the time. I walk around, please let me know, give me a wave, I'll see you around. The two things that I wanna go over with you with, the <clears throat> so the two things that I wanna go over with you regarding the market knowledge and just the real estate knowledge you need to have to be successful when knocking doors is being creative. Every single person's situation is gonna be different. But with this homeowner, I knew that he had bought the home multiple years ago, which means that this homeowner specifically had hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity, just because I knew the price that they bought it at and I knew the price at which it would sell. So I started asking questions regarding his mortgage, 
regarding kind of what their plans were. And I talked to him about how they could potentially do an assumable loan because their mortgage could potentially be assumable. In my market, assumable loans are incredibly powerful right now. If you have a client that has an assumable loan and you think their home may sit regardless, this is an incredible way to supercharge your listing and get a ton more interest because a lot of people want that interest rate and are willing to pay for it. The second thing we talked about is just straight up seller financing. He didn't really understand how to sell or finance his property, use a wraparound mortgage, a couple of other things. And so I briefly mentioned these. I could tell that his interest and my credibility was increasing as the conversation went on. So the reason why I did not push is because I'm actually going to circle back around to this homeowner and bring him a market analysis over the next couple of weeks or months and just say, hey, just wanted to let you know, here is a breakdown of kind of what we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Let me know if you have any questions, happy to help. Sometimes it's actually better to just kill the follow-up, have an incredible relationship with somebody instead of trying to persuade them that their friend isn't a good option and that they should work with me. Instead, I'm gonna prove myself with the effort, information, and professionalism that I then provide. Even if this person never ends up working with me, I'm totally okay with that because of the relationships I'm building, the practice I'm getting from having conversations with homeowners, and just the growth I'm having as a person getting out and knocking doors. Knocking doors is really hard, but the success that can come from it if you have a great follow-up system, if you know what to say at the door, and if you know how to close conversations to get those people into your database and to remarket them to successfully land deals in the future. Door knocking it can be an incredibly fast way to get business, but like I've said multiple times, it is a long haul and playing the long term. In the short term, I have 100% closed business day of. I have gotten somebody under contract the same day I've knocked on their door, but majority of my deals have happened three to four months after the initial contact of that person. So the one piece of advice I have is be super consistent push through the hard times, let me know if you have questions, and let me know if I can help you succeed with door knocking. If there's any other questions you have, or if you're a new agent and want to learn how to succeed going from zero to trying to become the perfect real estate agent making six figures, shoot me a message at Cameron at realestateagentschool.co, and I hope to hear from you soon.